Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Hope you all had a wonderful holiday and a great new year. And, you know, I've been recently digging into cursed and haunted artifacts, specifically stuff that's found in the Warren Occult Museum. In case you didn't know, Anne and Lorraine Warren were famous demonologists, sometimes infamous, who travel the world investigating supposed demonic infestations, paranormal uh, possessions, things like that. Their exploits have inspired horror franchise uh, The Conjuring, which follows their uh, exploits and uh, some of the cases they've taken. Their lives are mired in controversy and often considered they are considered frauds and con artists. And that's a story for another time. Throughout their lives, though, they did acquire a lot of uh, cursed, haunted objects that uh, ended up in their infamous occult museum. Here are ten objects that I found kind of gave me the willies, in no particular order, and I decided to rank them as well. Now the shadow doll is supposedly made of various human and animal bones, all kind of held together with black fabric. And this nightmare fuel sports uh, a contorted face. It's framed with frizzy black hair. It's really ugh. ugh. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. I'm not gonna lie. It's said that it was created in a ritual. The creator claims that it was made as a means of cursing those who uh, they want to curse, they would take a photo of the doll and send it to them. Ed Warren claimed that those who witness or view the doll, and sorry, I showed you guys a picture of it, had to kind of add to the story. But if you view the doll, it will visit you in a nightmare, scare the bejesus out of you, and it supposedly could scare people so much that it would stop their hearts and kill them. So, uh, yeah, if you go to sleep and have a nightmare, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Yeah, it's just what it says that it's supposed to do. As for the tier, I'll give it an A tier. I do think it's kind of creepy. It's not nearly as iconic as something like Annabelle, or, but it is something I find extremely disturbing. <laughs> just looking at it, ooh. I hate dolls, so I'm going to give that thing a solid A tier. Yep, as a Dracula-esque sleeping bag, which reportedly owned by a modern-day a modern day vampire. And they slept in it during the day, went on the prowl at night. That's about it. I'll give it a solid D tier. Super boring, kind of not super original. It's just some edgelord crap, some guy claiming to be a vampire, sleeping in a coffin, you know, any edgelord could do that. The Pearls of Death were reportedly a dangerous object. The owner claimed that when they wore them, it would tighten around their neck and strangle them. Legend says that it would choke out anyone who don't dare wear the pearls. And that's about it. Probably I'll give it a C tier, you know. It sounds like something out of a Goosebumps book, I'm not gonna lie. But I guess, you know, it's dangerous, which ups the intrigue factor, I guess. But all in all, I think it's kind of boring. Despite its name, The Mirror has not been featured in any Conjuring movie. Um, the Mirror got its name because it was used, supposedly, in conjuring demons and spirits into our world. The uh, Warren's son-in-law claims that the mirror was used in crystal mancy, which is a form of magic that manipulates crystals. I'll throw this one in A tier as well. The mirrors have all been heavily involved in paranormal uh, stories from like the Bloody Mary game we all played as a kid to the real psychological phenomenon that happens when you stare at your own face in a mirror for too long, you begin to start to hallucinate, your face starts to change, and it gets really creepy. I've never done it myself, I well, I should probably try it out sometime, but it's an actual documented thing, and that's, again, something, a story for another time. Now, 
even if this monkey wasn't haunted, it would still give me the chills. I mean, look at it. Look into its eyes. Look into its eyes and tell me it does not want to eat your soul. And, ooh, I don't know, I've just seen monkeys like that in other media, like Fallout with Jing or Bojangles the Moon Monkey, something like that. And that creepy do uh, monkey from Toy Story 3. Yeah, man, just like anything like that, it really just freaks me out. It goes back to the dolls. I hate dolls. And uh, the story behind this one is that it was a vessel for a demon. And the demon was like a real, real creep, I guess. It would stalk its victims before eventually murdering them, which in and of itself is actually really creepy. So I'll throw this one in the B tier. It's, it's creepy. The doll is really freaky, and the demon is it's creepy, but... I don't know, it just doesn't have that it factor for me, you know? This organ is supposedly haunted and plays itself at night. That's it. It just plays itself at night. It says it's playing the music from the spirits that haunt the, haunt the organ. Yeah, I'm a D tier. Unoriginal, boring, you know, nothing crazy there. Now this is supposedly a tombstone from a child's grave and the tombstone was involved in being part of an altar that was used for satanic rituals. It was uh, specifically, it was claimed by the Warrens that it was used to some demonic entities. And you know that, I'll put that one as B tier. The kid's tombstone itself doesn't like freak me out just looking at it. But just the idea behind it is kind of creepy, you know? If it's real, that's a real bum way of memory, or remembering a child, you know, using their headstone to summon demons, you know? So, B tier, you know? Now, I guess there are many skulls in the museum, but this one in particular has kind of a creepy story that goes along with it. It's not known who the skull belongs to, but it was claimed it was used in black magic rituals and ceremonies. It was used as a sort of bowl. The top part of the skull was cut off and they used it to put candles and body parts and other things that were used in rituals. And uh, use that to summon creatures, monsters, ghosts, ghouls, all that kind of stuff. Also throw that one in the B tier. It's a creepy story, creepy object that's involved, but nothing that's like crazy original or nothing that like gives me chills down my spine. Well, of course, no Warren Occult Museum would be complete, or a list of things from the museum would be complete without mentioning the Annabelle doll. I'll forego going over the detailed history of the Annabelle doll since it's been done ad nauseum on all sorts of other videos. So I'll just kind of quickly summarize the details. Um, the doll was purchased as a gift, it started getting violent and aggressive. A medium came and said that the doll was being possessed by a girl named Annabelle Higgins. However, it became increasingly more violent, would move around on its own, even showed up at some point with blood on it. And the Warrens eventually caught wind and investigated and determined that it was actually a demon impersonating a girl. They now kept it in their uh, museum behind a glass, or in a glass case, regularly blessed by a priest. A do not touch sign was installed and people were discouraged from mocking the doll. It is said that a museum patron once mocked the doll and drove home on their motorcycle only to die in a motorcycle accident that very day. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say if you'd go and vi visit it, just do so humbly and at your own risk. And I'll give it an S tier, a solid S tier. You know, it's iconic. It's the face of the, the, the Annabelle franchise, you know. Everyone knows about the Annabelle doll, and I find the Raggedy Ann doll that's the real thing way scarier than the porcelain doll that's used in the movies. I don't know, just something about its violent nature and the r innocence of the Raggedy Ann doll really just kind of... I purposefully left this one for last because it gives me the heebie-jeebies so bad. 
I've known about this one for some time, but no one seems to talk about this at all. This thing is so freaking goofy looking. It has big old ears. It's like uh, six foot three, but there's something about its blue eyes. You know, it just like stares into your soul. It just pierces me. I can't look at the picture for too long. It just, it's too creepy. It was found in a forest near Sandy Hook, Connecticut in the early 90s. A hunter found it in a circular rock formation. Supposedly, the hunter also encountered a shady man in a black robe shortly after finding the, uh, the doll. The Warrens claimed it was some sort of effigy that was used in demonic rituals. And this one is literally my sleep paralysis demon, so I'm going to put this one in S tier because, my goodness, I cannot get that picture, that image of this doll out of my head. It is just disturbing. I don't know what it is about it. It is freaky. But I guess there you have it, a non-comprehensive list of some of the more disturbing objects in the uh, occult museum. I'd love to visit it someday, but man, some of those things are spine-chilling, and I don't know if I want to risk my life with some of these stories, I tell you what. But uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think, if you agree or disagree with the rating, and uh, if there's any other creepy stories or... Uh, legends that you want me to talk about and as always stay spooky friends